All right, hello everyone. Thanks for joining the Best Company Podcast. I'm Justin Ashby. Today we're going to talk about how Rove Pest Control has been able to build their reputation over a number of years and over a number of states and how they've done it. It's a really interesting field and, and, and Rob Greer here is actually an expert. He's a COO at Rove Pest Control and he's going to talk to us a little bit about some technical aspects, how to turn that into true marketing jargon, something that uh, you know the average viewer can actually understand and relate with, and then how a true reputation reputation can be built with that information. So, Rob, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Good to be with you. Great, Rob is a fascinating person. I just want to read some of the some of the notes he sent me. Um, first off, he's been in pest control since two thousand one, so he. Uh, uh, got into it on the sales side, mainly to, to fund his university studies, even did a two-year stint in uh, Chile, uh, and and it's been fascinating kind of what brought him into pest control, an opportunity to make some money and and, and kind of fund some of the, the university and, and even uh, uh, two years in, in Chile in South America. Then in 2010, um, he took up ultra running. So this is really interesting about, um, about our friend Rob here. Uh, He's done a few sub 2,400 milers, 80 miles at world's toughest mutter, and a top five finish in a 314 mile race across Tennessee. That is just, I did not know a human body was built for such a, <laughs> oh man, such a, such a challenge. And then the last few years, he's, uh, he's even included a lot of rock climbing, and he plans to do a 350 mile race in June and an 1,800-foot climb in Washington in July and climbing the Grand Teton in August. So Rob's a fascinating person. So his wife and three kids, um, they are on the Minnesota Pest Management Association board. So he's certainly a leader in the space, um, definitely been innovating for a number of years, state politician, and uh, he's also on the board for uh, a charity board, NPO Fostering Love Project, coaches girls cross country at Stillwater High School, um, and I could go on to, uh, on and on, um, principal of keen development, spring shores lodge and the door to door millionaire. So Rob, again, uh, we're excited to have you. Let me, let me start you off with this question. So you got into pest control. Um, you're, you're a founder CEO of Rove pest control. What has kept you kind of in the space? Obviously you've been very successful. You've, uh, uh, really spread your wings in a lot of extracurricular activities and things, but you've stayed in pest, pest control for what, all these years. What has kind of kept you in the space and, and kept you excited? My wife has asked that a lot. So really at first it was just one more year. It was really a wonderful avenue to just make money quickly and be able to have a big impact. It has a really intense season where you can come in and capitalize on that. After that, the piece that kept me coming back were the people. At first, it was the individuals I was working with, the team members that would come up with different ideas or different projects that we could work on that kept things new and exciting and places to innovate and to create. And now it's really, you know, from there it shifted to being able to change people's lives, have a visible impact on people. I love that about this industry, just that you can go in and have somebody be in a really bad situation today and tomorrow their mental capacity is totally freed up to go in a different direction and, and be much more flourishing based in their life. Um, and I think my current place that I'm really finding enjoyment is in our team members and being able to have an impact in their life and see some of them grow and change and develop. And it's just, it's fun. And it's hard to, once you develop those relationships, it's like family and it's really hard to go anywhere else. Yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. Tell us a little bit about Rove, number of employees, kind of uh, how many states you cover. Obviously, pest control is really interesting, kind of how you manage a number of territories and just how you, how you hire teams. Walk us through a little bit about uh, Rove Pest Control. Yeah, right now we're sitting about 85 employees. Once we get to the peak of the summer, I'm sure we're going to skip over that 100 mark as far as number of boots on the ground. States that we're in are Minnesota, Wisconsin, Massachusetts, Michigan, and Arizona. So a little bit helter-skelter there, but mostly built around good people and good opportunities. That's awesome. Now, row of pest control, real quick, uh, 107 reviews, most of them five stars on bestcompany.com. So they are a very trusted uh, a pest control company and and 
uh, a conversation that Rob and I were having actually before the podcast was he's he's very much an expert in the field. Uh, technically, he understands the products. He understands um, you know how they can affect uh, 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 the environment, especially ar- uh, around a home. So, Rob, w- one of the questions that I think uh, our our listeners might be interested in is uh, you have this technical mindset. You kind of understand the product. How do you turn that into you know, marketing messaging, how do you really, how are you able to position your product, your company to be a leader because you've spent so much time to really understand the product and and its effects? Yeah, the deeper the knowledge is, the deeper you can go into the space and you can find unique things to develop. Like this year, just with some of the things we were studying, we came across some new technology that's going to allow us to add on additional pests that we can treat in a way that's less intrusive for people. And so a lot of the times we're going out talking to individuals saying, Hey, if you really want to target just one pest, we can do that. You know, you don't have to worry about this mass kill them all approach. We can come in and really hone things into what you want to kill and let the rest just be fine and happy. Um, Also just being able to customize it to their situation, like this new tree treatment that we're doing, uh, not having to go in and take the whole yard. We can just do a one inch treatment into the tree and take care of this pest that's been invading. So that element of being able to customize is a really good foundation. That's a very appealing element to people. And I think that's very shareable. It's they, there's the benefit of the customization, but then also they can see how you know, there's care for them personally, and and that gives them a personal story that they can share with other people. And I think the other thing that's fun is as we try and customize things, we always run into really weird circumstances here and there. And sometimes that takes a significant amount of ingenuity to come up with, how are we gonna tackle this one uh, within the confines that we have? And as we get some of those situations, then we try and write the stories up and write blogs and put them out there for people to see. And then that will spur other questions that'll come in and say, Hey, what about this situation? And then we'll go to work on it. And it kind of makes this back and forth exchange rather than us trying to push something out onto a market. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you mentioned, you know, being able to create an experience or a story to tell. I think if if one if one neighbor is experiencing a specific pest, you're able to craft a really unique offering for that neighbor. I can only imagine the referrals will come in a little bit uh, healthier, if you will. Have, have you noticed that? Yeah, that is definitely the case. And you know, one that really stands out as a super easy to share moment. We had a guy who had a home that was just butted up right to a swamp, completely surrounded with trees which is just the ideal mosquito breeding ground. Like, sure. I went out there to do the inspection and I couldn't hack it. It was just, I was eaten alive right away. They couldn't use their thing. When they would have people over, they, instead of bringing out a tray of drinks, it was a tray of different mosquito sprays and everybody would just douse themselves in repellent and still get eaten alive. Um, we went to work to customize this and get something that would work in his setting, especially with, some of the protected land he was up against. And within a couple of weeks, he had, he invited us out. He had this big barbecue gathering with all his neighbors. And, you know, these are the kind of homes where it's, you know, like acres to the next person, but Mm -hmm. they all came in and they were just blown away with how you were able to just sit comfortably on the deck. And that story really told itself, but he was really excited to share with everyone how they, went about it and, and what the start and the end was. And yeah, very shareable, very fun. That's cool. Let, you know, talk about, so, so that, that process where you're going and trying to figure out a plan for this specific home, is that, is that a decent percentage of the deals that you're doing or, you know, is it, is it, do you have a, a one size, obviously not fits all, but do you have a, a common package that you kind of share? Walk us through how you how you propose certain um, packages and, and how you kind of tackle different problems at houses. Yeah, we have a, a, the way our website is set up is people can go on and they can select, even with this, with our preset packages, they'll go on, they'll be able to select the main pest they're concerned about and it'll preload a package for them um, based on that. But we have on there, we're 
really try to make it very aware and available to them that they can contact one of our reps to build their own thing out. And most people take advantage of that just to have that option available. They'll call in and we have full-time inbound uh, customer success specialists that take those calls and they'll go through and they'll ask them and drill down to not just, oh, you're dealing with ants. Well, how big are those ants? But, you know, look at this, give me this specific, okay, we're dealing with a carpenter ant here. This is this kind of ant. So we know that X, Y, and Z is happening and then they can have those conversations and they can ask, hey, do you have any pets that you're concerned about? What's your yard like? What do you have for a kid's situation? And just really tailor everything, not just what are we targeting, but let's make sure this fits your whole lifestyle so that we're not interfering with anything. And even with those automatic options, I think, especially with them coming from referrals, people are eager to talk to the agent that helped out cousin Betty or whoever, because they took such a personal care for her. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Now I mentioned you, you, uh, Rove has built a, a great reputation up on bestcompany.com. What has been your process kind of, um, you know, you're offering a really a great custom uh, uh, customer experience. Uh, you're trying to figure out plans that are really going to make an impact uh, for someone's home and their property. What's been your process making sure that you are, you know, trusted? Obviously, you come, you you say, hey, yeah, we'll we'll come with a we'll come up with a real unique plan for you. But at that point, they really need to trust your services, trust what you're going to offer. What's been your process to make sure that that Rove kind of gets that stamp of approval? Boy, being able to show people some of those reviews and the experiences that people have is key. I think the element that really helps us out beyond that is transparency and honesty. Um, mm -hmm. There's this big fear about letting people know that you don't know everything or that something could go wrong. And we find that that really <clears throat> works in our favor. So when we're setting somebody up, we train all of our reps to talk to them and say, hey, you know, we're gonna set you up on the best plan. We're gonna with the best products but this is nature, anything can happen. So if and when something goes wrong, just call us, let us know. We'll go back out there, we guarantee our work. If the neighbors next to you start cutting ground and their pests get disturbed and go your way, that's not your fault. It's not really our fault, but it just is. So we're gonna go out there, we won't charge you extra, and we're just gonna keep you where you need to be. And just having that extra peace of mind and knowing that we're committed to figuring it out. And if we've got to try 20 different things to find the right solution for them, we're going to do it and it's not going to cost them extra. That makes it easy for them to take that step forward and go with it. Yeah. When, uh, when you come up to competitors in your area, do you find that kind of, you mentioned your website, you can kind of craft your own plan there. It sounds like you've taken a much more educational approach. Some of these groups, you know, whether it's pest control or a number of other home services, it's very like e-commerce, highly optimized, where, where it's all, you know, making sure that customers are immediately becoming opportunities. And it, it I kind of got a hinting that you're taking much more of an educational approach, transparency. Is, is that how you differentiate, differentiate yourself from some competitors or maybe walk us through how you're doing that? Yeah, the space is interesting. There definitely is a large group of companies that are just out pushing one or two packages and it's just how many can we set up how quickly we're going to lose yep. some because it's not going to fit but it's just it's a numbers game how many can we push and then you've got some others that are just i think the other end of the spectrum is the overly scientific company where it's just really jargon intense and very high level and it's hard for people to relate to unless they're Somebody that's, you know, maybe a commercial building manager that's been in it for a long time and can talk the talk, it's, it goes way over their head. And I, I see a lot of companies really pride themselves in just how complex and how technical they can make it. So trying to be able to just, yeah, that's where we saw the, the opening is in the personal connection and, and really finding the sweet spot in between there where it's not too technical that they have decision paralysis occurring, but there's enough options. And when we talk to someone with just a few questions, we can give them those one to three options to choose from rather than getting beyond that where it's just, it's too much to handle. Yeah. Yeah. Where, um, you know, thinking about 
companies that even, you know, sometimes scale quickly across the country. They just enter a new territory and you guys have kind of built a moat a little bit around yourself, having these customer experiences ready at the, you know, you're, you're sharing them, you're bringing them up to, you know, to help whether you call it closing a deal or just at least you're being transparent and showing kind of the customer experience you offer. Do you consider that kind of a moat? Do you utilize that? And, and do you feel like that is always going to give you kind of an upper hand in the territories that you're in just because you've already been offering a customer experience there and you, you know that you can utilize that? Yeah, it definitely plays to that advantage. And there's a lot of a lot of people will jump in and they'll just take whatever's presented to them at first. And so mm. we know there's these just giant load of customers that are out there that are getting picked up by the companies that are out pushing really hard just to set everybody up on the same thing. And it's kind of a patience game. We just know that within a year or two, they're going to look at things and say, you know, wh why aren't we seeing the changes that we should? Or, you know, this company came in and said, yeah, this takes care of everything that crawls, flies, does trees, et cetera. It just covers everything. You know, that's not going to hold true because there's no magic bullet that does that. Sure. And so mm -hmm. as people get exposed to this and they get familiar with it, then either they're going to start researching on their own and then they're going to be drawn towards this open and easy to read educational front, easy to communicate with piece or they're going to start talking to people. And we have enough depth in our markets that, you know, once they hop on next door and start saying, Hey, is this normal? Should I be experiencing this? Then somebody's going to pipe up back. Oh, no, no, come over and, you know, check this out. This is what's going to help. And they can find those specialized elements that apply to them and, and they'll fall into that. And I think from the other end of the spectrum too, right? Where, where maybe people think, oh, I don't know anything about this. Let me go with the most technical possible. Cool. Go with the super science-y ones and be with them for a little bit. If it works for you, great. Um, but eventually a lot of them get tired of that. Like, I, I just need something simpler that just occurs. And so then they'll slide back into our wheelhouse again from that direction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, my, my personal experience, obviously there's a number of home services that I feel like kind of have a similar model to pest control. One was we just had a number of, weeds when we moved into a, a, a home it was it was a um you know wasn't a brand new home so the yard just hadn't been taken care of a ton and and i remember just weeding over so finally we we paid for a service and i remember my neighbor who has an immaculate yard you know said hey you should you should try out the people that are you know helping me out and and um i remember i was seeing so many ads you know you say it once and then all of a sudden the ads start showing up on on every social feed and everything and I just remember getting a little lured by like a promotion. Hey, and it's one of those things like you mentioned, trying to just get as many customers as fast as possible. And it was not a good experience. And the next year, I obviously went with my neighbors. I, you know, I repented and said, hey, who, who's the group that's helping you out? And I felt like that referral base, I mean, these, these industries that really like if you can figure out a healthy referral program uh, with your solid customer experiences, I think that's the best type of marketing that you can possibly come up. So as we're... As we're kind of wrapping up here, Rob, do you, could you mention at all on, on you know, and I'm just really fascinated on on how you're um, crafting these really unique plans for for specific customers and maybe only going after one, um, you know, one type of uh, a, a bug or what you know, whatever the vocabulary is there, one pest. Um, you know, how how has like a referral program helped you guys? Have you figured out how to kind of build that up, or or where are you currently at with that? Yeah, referrals are absolutely huge, and we provide really good incentives for our customers to do it. So, I, you know, for new markets or some people that are unfamiliar with it, they can be a little bit afraid of some kind of stigma being attached to talking about pest control, uh, mm -hmm. not wanting to admit to having to do that or whatever. But so we, we let them know that, you know, if you're dealing with it, everybody is help them out and and that's kind of the perspective that we want to use is help your neighbors and family and friends out you refer them to us they'll get a free service and we'll give you a free service as well um just because that's you know that's going to help them share a little bit and then it's going to allow people to witness that thing because like the situation you were talking about you know maybe you didn't have a great relationship with that neighbor yet maybe you're a little bit new it might be hard to trust them. And that's why you're a little bit lured in by something else. So if that neighbor has something to 
offer you along with that referral that can help somebody be a little more trusting and and go along with it. Also, I think, you know, just with time and continuing to remind customers over and over again about those referral programs, they'll keep reaching out to those neighbors again and again. And eventually they're going to be around long enough to see and experience our services through their neighbor, through their family or through their friend. And that's a lot more than just hearing about it from somebody you cross paths with. So the more connected those people are to each other, the stronger those referrals get. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. I think, uh, depending on how they position it and, um, uh, you know, uh, same thing. Like once I got to know that neighbor a little bit more, I was definitely more inclined and, and felt more, more comfortable with it. So, yeah. And if yeah, you would have had an offer to extend to you, it probably would have made that easier because you would have got both sides of the equation. You have the referral and he's offering you the bargain that you went and hunted for anyway. That gives you a double reason to go that direction and trust that referral or be enticed by it. Yeah. I, yeah, certainly. Like I think, and that's part of probably making sure that the referral program is ready to go with that. Cause if that neighbor had said, Hey, I, you know, and I said, yeah, you know, I'm, this is the deal I saw online. And he says, you know what? Like, um, the, the guys that work with me gave me this code, you go just type this in, you'll get the same deal. You know, I, I, you're right. I think that would have made it easier. So having something to be able to build those is, I think would, would certainly be ideal. So, okay. Well, Rob, thank you so much. Typically on our way out from a, a podcast, I ask you, you know, you've been in this industry for a number of years. We have people listening and watching that are, you know, trying to build their reputation online, try to, trying to better position themselves um, uh, online as, you know, as tr a trusted service, as um, uh, a brand that is going to offer the best customer experience possible. Um, parting words, kind of what, what has been your focus over the years to make sure your company's doing that? What advice could you give? I know there's no, you know, I'm not asking you to share any any industry secrets here or anything, but just what in your career, what have you kind of tried to make sure you're always um, uh, getting getting better at? I think probably the best thing I can share is just in pest control, there's a lot of really high emotions running when people enter the space. Uh, they're dealing with things that frighten them and they're just set for an emotional response. And I listen to a lot of companies in various industries that really worry about upset customers or bad reviews. And um, they may be so afraid of that, that they won't even ask for reviews and they'd rather just stay offline and try and hide from them. And a big turning point for us was taking those and looking at them as opportunities to connect with someone. And whether we're able to help that person or not, people will see that attempt and that compassion for somebody in that situation and trying to resolve it, trying to find a solution for them. And that's very appealing and very attractive to people. And I think some of those attempts themselves become referral and shareable moments in and of themselves. And so don't be afraid of them. Look for every opportunity to just show who you are and people will see it. Yeah. And we, I, I mean, I can personally back that up just with research that we've done. We know on best company, uh, the platform, bestcompany.com, like the companies that are responding to reviewers, both po positive and negative, the ones that are trying to resolve issues that were brought up in a review, those companies are somewhat clearly performing better and better over time, but also just typically they're getting more traffic to their pages. They're getting more opportunities with customers. So yeah, I second that. What a great thing to to leave with all of our, our viewers here, Rob. So, all right, Rob, well, thank you so much for joining us on the Best Company Podcast. We appreciate you and and uh, looking forward to doing um, uh, a lot more with you in the in the future and promoting a, a Rove as a, as a trusted brand on, on Best Company. Thanks, Justin. We appreciate your time. All right, Rob. We'll see you. See you.